For decades, I used to think that curves was the only way to get perfect skin tones, but boy how wrong I was. There's a way which is way easier, way more visual, and here's how to apply it. With the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J, and then go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filter so that whatever we apply, we can change the values later. By the way, you already guessed it, it's inside of Camera Raw. Let's go to Filter and let's apply Camera Raw as a filter. You can also directly apply it as you import raw photos or in Lightroom, it is the exact same thing. All you need to do is to open up the Color Mixer right here. Just open that up and you don't even have to play with all of these sliders. Just activate this button. A new panel shows up. By the way, you want to make sure that your camera is updated. You will see it in the later versions. And then all you have to do is to select hue, saturation or lightness and adjust it on screen. How incredible is that? Let's start with hue. With hue activated, just click and drag to the right or left to make it more green or magenta-ish. So I'm just going to make it a little more magenta and there you go, instantly it fixed that. How amazing is that? Now you can do it for different areas, but I think for this area as well, it's moving the same slider. So we don't need to do that right now. Again, there's a separate setting for that. We're going to get to that later. With saturation, let's select it. Let's click and drag it right to increase the saturation of that color. Drag it left to decrease the saturation of that color. I'm going to keep it right about here. Keep in mind, the thing that you're seeing on YouTube, the colors have been changed because once I export the video, upload it to YouTube, YouTube changes the colors a lot. So what I'm seeing is absolutely not what you're seeing, but you get the idea here. Let's go to luminance, click on it to activate it. You can also activate them from here as well. Same thing. Click and drag it to the right to increase the brightness of that color and to the left to decrease it. So I'm going to keep it right about there. And just with that, here's the before and here is the after. <laughs> Instant fix. You can take it even further by targeting maybe the highlight colors and the shadow colors differently. So therefore, you now have something incredibly amazing and that is point color. Let's activate that by clicking here and you can sample different colors. With the help of the eyedropper right here, activate it and let's create a sample for this color. As you can see, the sample right there. You can sample multiple colors, by the way. Let's create one more sample. Select the eyedropper and click right here. Now we have two samples, one for these bright areas and one for the dark areas, and you can adjust them separately. Let's select the bright area first, and you can adjust the hue, saturation, and luminance of that particular color. By the way, if you want to see the range of colors selected, click on it to activate it and only those areas will be colored and the rest of the areas would be black and white. You can set the range to be very specific or broader. That's up to you. Let's double click on the slider to set it back to 50. You can even expand it and play with the range further. If you want to target more of the hue range and saturation range, that's more advanced. We don't want to get into it right now because it's not really needed at this point. Let's deactivate this to see the entire colors. And now you can increase the saturation slightly of the bright areas. Play with the hue slightly. So I'm going to take it maybe slightly on the left hand side and play with the luminance. Maybe a bit brighter. Now for the dark colors, which we had already created the swatch for, activate that and then you can play with its hue, saturation and lightness. I feel the saturation can be reduced slightly, like so, and the luminance can be slightly increased, depending upon the style that you're going for. And of course, you can play with the hue. All right, let's keep it at that. Now, if you like to edit more visually, instead of using all of these sliders, you can click on this tiny arrow right here and an entire color panel shows up. Here, you can move this around to automatically move these sliders. So if you take it to the left hand side and on the right hand side, the hue changes up or down, saturation changes and using this slider right here, luminance changes. So that is also an option. Personally, I like to move the sliders. That is more convenient for me. Now, while we are at it, why not just also introduce some colors in the background to make it more interesting? So let's go to the masking section here. And we want to select the background, click here, and it automatically makes a mask of the background. And here, and that's why it's important to understand the traditional methods of Photoshop. Since we know curves, we are just going to scroll down, get inside of curves, and inside of the red channel, just take it down 
to introduce more cyan. There you go. How amazing that is. By the way, it's color coded. If you take it up, it's going to make it red and red it shows here and here it shows cyan. See the UI is so much better in camera. So I'm going to take it down like so to introduce that color. And also you can go to greens and make it slightly more greener. And you can go to blue and slightly more bluish. All right. And overall, you can make it slightly darker. Maybe this is fine. And you can go on and on here. There is no stopping. If you want to take it a step further, maybe add some shine to the eyes. Let's go to the presets section. There are some adaptive presets. Open that up. It automatically will mask the eyes or whiten teeth. So let's activate enhance eyes. So here's before, here's after. Click on it to activate it. And you can increase the amount of it or decrease the amount of it. So I'm going to keep it right in the middle. And this is pretty much fantastic. Hit OK once you're satisfied. And there you go. Here's the before. And here is the after. Massive, massive difference. And the great part is you can always go back and adjust stuff later. All you have to do is to double click on the camera raw filter. And then you can get back to the colors and make as many adjustments as you wish. Point color or mixer up to you. Now while we are at it, why not just also give an edge to the portrait. Let's go to effects and maybe I'm just going to increase the texture slightly to add some more edge to the portrait. And you can play with the clarity a little bit and dehaze a little bit. There you go. Hit OK once you're satisfied and boom, this is just incredible. Here is the before and here is the after. Now let's move on to the next example because different images require different treatments, just like people. So with this example as well, with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. Now let's go to filter, convert for smart filters so that we can change the values later, just like we did in the previous example. Go to filter and then camera raw filter. Looking at the color of the hair and the other parts of the image, I feel that a white balance correction will fix most of the green tinge that we see. For it, let's open up the colors section. But before it, let's zoom into one of the eyes. Open up the colors section with the white balance eyedropper right here. Click on one of those areas which should have been neutral or white or gray. So this area and it instantly fixes that. Also, there's another reason why I zoomed. If you want to sample an average color of an entire area, just click and drag. That way, it will take the entire average of that area. Control or Command 0 to fit it and instantly. It is just amazing. Here's the before and here is the after. Now the face seems pretty good, but the color of the body is a bit yellowish and greenish. We need to fix just that. Camera makes it so much more easier. In the masking section, scroll down to where it says people. It will identify her, click on her, and then inside of that, check body skin and it only targets that specific area. How cool is that? Click on create. Now in here, we will do the same point color thing. Scroll down and here we have point color. With the eyedropper, let's first target this area. We have sampled that. You can play with the range to see which area it is targeting by activating this button and then playing with it. I think 50 is fine. We don't have to fiddle with it a lot. And just let's decrease the saturation. And it matches instantly. Also luminance, make it slightly brighter. And with the hue, let's take it to the left. There you go. Now it is so much closer to that of the face. But what about that dark area? Let's create another color by selecting the eyedropper again and clicking on this area. Now have a look at the range. Which area is it targeting by activating this? Have a look. You can clearly see that those are the areas. Keep in mind, areas in color are targeted. You can expand the range, but 50 is fine. Let's see all the colors by turning off this button and play with saturation. Let's take it down slightly. Maybe luminance can help a bit and the hue definitely a bit on the left hand side. Play with the saturation a bit more. And this one does it. Hit OK once you're satisfied and have a look. This is just so good. Here's the before and here is the after. Subtle and nice. So that's how to easily get amazing skin tones with just camera raw. Keep in mind what you are seeing is very different from what I'm seeing. So if it looks weird, just understand that it works. So for skin tones, all you need to focus on is the color mixer, the incredibly amazing point color, and sometimes white balance inside of color. 
and from time to time you may have to mask different areas and the automatic masking inside of camera and Lightroom makes it so much easier. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.